Hello, hello. Welcome to Sage Budget Brews. I'm Tim. And tonight I'm joined by Mr. Jamaican Dude himself. Welcome back. Well, hello, 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 everyone. How are you and doing today, Tim? I'm doing good. And we have Ben. Hi. How are you? I think I screwed up your name. <laughs> nah, you were close. It's just, yeah, that, close uh, enough. There. It was cause, it's I, I just always call you Ben, so I like... Yeah, so I never like it's, I never call you by your like, username. It's, it's it's Ben Shiner, so you actually got it right. Oh, gotcha. Okay. Yeah. 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 Uh, so continuing in our series on um, beginner CDH meta busters, uh, I want to. I have these two gentlemen on tonight. We wanted to discuss uh, Corvold Treasure Storm, and so this is a deck by Ben. Jamaican also has his own build. That's why we have two experts on this evening it's not a deck i've played a ton i used to play this more when it was like a uh when it was like a food chain build yeah. but watching the treasure storm build in action i think it's a really good deck to kind of get your feet wet on with storm because you don't have to worry about uh you don't have to worry about counter magic as much kind of focus your training on how to navigate interaction more so versus like having the counter spells to kind of force your way through. So you kind of learn how to mulligan better and stuff like that. So I think I want to let uh, Ben take it away and talk about Corvold first. How's that sound? Sounds Stop great. It. All right. Um, Corvold is a Jun Turbo Nas deck. Mm -hmm. So like Timmy said, you don't have to worry about drawing counter magic. So you kind of, all your cards just go burr. Corvold itself is a is essentially a one card combo with dockside extortionist because of the mm -hmm. way treasures interact with Corvold. Mm -hmm. So you are on the so when you're mulliganing on the one hand you're looking for if you believe your pot is going to feed dockside even a little bit, like even four or five, then you mull for a dockside hand and you try to win that way. And if you think you're not or you just happen to get lucky on a mulligan, you mull for an ad nas hand and you go for like a the, the Jund Nas plan. Just what makes Corvold so good with Dockside, for those that don't know. Um, Corvold has the ability whenever you sacrifice a permanent he puts a plus one plus one counter on himself and draws a card so with Dockside making treasures you uh, you make mana and draw cards which l lets you manually storm through your deck in this in this deck you use reanimation instead of bounce spells because we don't okay. have blue um, so a Nas hand would be like just has mana and a payoff so it doesn't necessarily have to be ad nauseum it can be like your Necropotence, your Appearance of the Abyss, even your Demonic Tutor, right? And you just wait a turn to cast it to see if uh, they fed Dockside or not, right? Okay. Like, it's just, you have to, part of playing this deck is understanding that there will be pods where your Dockside doesn't do anything, and you have to be able to pivot. So what are some of the outlets for the deck? How do you win the game? You win the game with Praetor's Grasp, Mayhem Devil... Grinding Station, Underworld Breach, or like in the worst of worst cases, you can use a finale and all your creatures after you've done Underworld Breach stuff and Dockside stuff. The finale of Devastation for a bunch. Okay. Yeah. I also noticed you have Chain of Smog and Wither Balloon Apprentice in your build as well. Oh, excuse me. Yes. So I, I, um, that, thank you for mentioning that. I am recently, so this build is a, is a card for card what I am playing in paper, including what I'm testing. So mm -hmm. I am typically so that's why you see a professional face breaker in there where which should should probably just be a just as well. I'm just I'm just testing it. I think you can play this deck win con less. I but I also think that having a hard win con makes your Nas plan a lot better. So right mm -hmm. now I'm, I'm I'm testing the hard win con, okay. which is something I got from Sean. Just being more more of a responsible player and like actually just playing a win con. At its floor, kind of Corvold. Is, is a Jun Storm deck, and then you just kind of are able to either A, kind of turn Dockside into essentially like X mana plus X cards when you play them. So it kind of, he with Corvold in play, kind of acts like a redundant Adnos. Then you also have your Necropotence. And then you have a couple of different hard outlets. It looks like you also have like your Reanimator package here with obviously Reanimate, Dance of the Dead. There's a loop you can do with Dance of the Dead, right? Yeah, so if you have a sack outlet, Dockside, and Dance of the Dead, you can make infinite treasures and draw your deck. Um, I only play Skirk Prospector, okay, which 
or and and mayhem devil, which sort of counts as a as a sack outlet. You got oh, she can ping. Cor- you mean you got the corpse dance, right? Didn't yeah. I say corpse dance? No, you said dance of the dead. Oh, yep. No, definitely corpse dance. Sorry, dance the dead. The uh, thank you, Sean. Dance of the dead. Yeah. We also play, but it's just a two mana anima- reanimation yeah. spell. Yeah, yeah, it's just at that point. So my apologies. Uh, yep. No, no, no problem. Yes, and yeah. So Dance of the Dead is one of your main win cons. Um, if you are playing in a super staxy staxy meta, you could mm-hmm. replace that with Emer Sabretooth. You could replace that with the new Technomancer card. You know, you could That's even true. get. You know, like these are these are these are considerations you could make. I think that Dance is the most streamlined of the Dockside loops for this. Corpse deck, Dance, also, yeah. Because it's just also a reanimation spell. So well, it's just, also at instant speed too. So if you can yeah. set it up, you can set up on board. You can do it at instant speed, which is nice. Yeah, and then it helps like with necropotence. Like, say you like necro for a ton, and you draw your entomb, and you have a corpse chance, but you don't have a lot of other mana. Like, make something happen there. Yeah, necro is worth mentioning here. Necropotence. Um, in, okay. In Junt, you just get a lot of tools. You get crop rotation. You get final fortune, ESG, and SSG. I use Summoner's Pact. You can play Metamorphose. Yep. John just has all of the goodies for Necropotence. I think Necropotence is definitely a card to in a lot of Turbo decks people can look at to cut lately. It's yeah. still very powerful. But I think in John, because you have like literally every card in the package, it's well worth playing. Well, and you also have uh, some d- really good instant speed lines to add in. And for those yeah. of you who don't know what ESG and SSG are, that's Simeon Spirit Guide and Elvish Spirit Guide, which are creatures that you can pitch for either a green or red mana. And so what you're looking to do with the Necropotence, hopefully, is draw your crop rotation and not your emergence zone. Cast your crop rotation, crack your emergence zone, win the game, or cast a Final Fortune, Hard Sculpt, and then mm-hmm. win the game that way. Okay. Um, there mm-hmm. is a way... There is a way to do the crop rotation thing if you draw both the crop rotation and the E zone, but you mm-hmm. have to do it from six cards in hand because one of your cards in hand needs to be Noxious Revival and you need to put the E zone back into your deck. Excuse me, five cards in hand because one of your cards needs to be Noxious Revival and one of them needs to be crop rotation. It's because you, you discard all your cards, then the Necro triggers go on the stack, you E zone, your, 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 you, Proper, you, excuse me, you Noxious Revival your E-Zone back into your mm-hmm. library, yep. and then you cast the crop rotation and try to win with those five cards. That's a fail case. You really don't want to get to that point. I, I'd almost say casting like a Nature's Claim or a Abrupt Decay on your own Necropotence is probably safer than making that play a lot okay. of the time. Cool. Just because like people will sometimes stop targeting you like if you kill your own thing, plus like you get to keep the cards out of exile so now we've kind of gone over the basics with your build are there any other variants out there my build is a little more on the greedier side of it i i i am playing more of a reanimator heavy um list versus i i don't believe john should interact with the table but that is just my play style so oh, I yeah. played a lot more reanimation effects where okay. if the if the if the pod is greedy, my my deck I wanna say it's parasitic because it, it really depends on how greedy the players are. Okay. If it's a very conservative pod, my deck won't really shine because okay. it really wants to abuse dark side. So I play three more reanimation effects. I mean, that gives me more of an explosive turn. So if we're in a pod where a lot of people are trying to ramp early, mm-hmm. um, I I can, like, resolve a turn one dark side for five or six. Like, I can reliably go off from there. And I was just going to say that, and it does look like your build is um a, definitely less interactive, Yeah, but can kind of it looks like it's got a little bit more it leans a little bit harder into the instant speed win whereas ben's list uh is a little bit more not, not that it doesn't have the instant speed win but seems to be a little more wins at sorcery speed yeah you're trying to cast main phase ad nauseum or main phase dioxide in my deck for sure yeah sean looks like your list sean looks like a little more tech to kind of go over the top of people 
Yeah, it, it can go over the top. Normally, that's not how it goes, but like it, 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 it has the potential to, if I have a crop run in hand or a way to reanimate a dark side, like I can't just sandbag until or, the last possible moment. Or even if you're not going over the top, that you're you're like able to like use the end step necro lines a little bit easier because of your instant speed reanimation effects. Right. Yeah, like you play three playing three of yeah. those is pretty good. I could definitely see my like another another card that professional facebreaker could be is is, you know, necromancy. Yeah. I think something worth mentioning is that there's like probably hundred and fifty playable cards in, in this archetype. Mm -hmm. So really you should yeah. play you should play what makes you you know, don't don't fuck with the core of the deck, but you should definitely play what makes you comfortable and makes you, yeah. you know, feel powerful. Right. Well, and, and the thing that I like about Corvold is since you're in Jund, you're, you're getting the storm lines, but it teaches you much like with like Godo or like other non blue decks. It teaches you that you have to like know how to pick your window really well. So you have to learn how to yeah. read the table and keep track of everything. Like keep track of what everybody's doing. You also need to know how to mulligan aggressively into what's going to be a viable plan for that pod. Yeah. But you do have all the good tricks. Like you get Boseju, you get the Brep Decay Astrophy, you get all the standard Jun stuff. You get all the, you know, all the, all the Rakdos rituals and, 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 and storm things. But then also the other thing that's nice is that not only does Jun budget pretty well, like you could build a pretty reasonably like pretty reasonably powerful version of this deck for like I mean, I wouldn't go below five hundred. I would honestly I would like to see it more at seven fifty with the way card prices are now. Yeah, seven fifty to a thousand, yeah. And and essentially the cards that you get gated by for so fast. Yeah, so re and the reason why you really want to stick with the 750 is because you want a few fetches because that gives you your Corvold's energy. You at least right. want, like, Chrome Mox, Mana Vault, Mox Opal at a minimum, and probably yeah. Jeweled Lotus, but you can kind of start working from there. And a lot of the cards outside of, like, the dual lands and a couple of the, like, basically if you cut 10 cards, you're essentially at that that $1,000, yeah. 750 mark. Yeah. The play has because I don't I don't own any like super super money cards so I think I have there's five cards that I don't own the deck in the deck there's the you know the three dual lands imperial seal wheel okay. of fortune and led are the only cards that I don't add and uh, Sean's actually going sans wheel of fortune right now and I think that's totally reasonable this deck draws a lot of cards you know, yeah I like oh, I like three mana draw seven I think that's gas. But you could totally like that's another card that could just be Jess's will, right? You know what I mean? Like, you well, could, yeah, totally. Well, in, in my instance, like being a non blue, I like playing three mana to draw seven, but I don't like paying three mana for my opponents to draw 21. I respect that. So, like, I cut all the wheels from Goto because I was just like, uh, every time I cast a wheel, I just get stopped again. So, huh. I'm better exactly. off. I'm just better off that's learning how to grind off the top deck than I listen, am. Listen, guys, everyone out there. Blue is a crutch. Don't play blue. Blue is for the weak. Facts. For the weak minded. <laughs> just let me go. Just let me go, Burr. No, yeah. Don't worry, man. Yeah. So, okay. Are there? Is there anything that like maybe we went we didn't we kind of didn't go over yet? Um. Anything? Yeah. Can I uh, can I give some props to some people who put me onto this deck like a couple years ago? Yeah, for sure, man. Totally. Um. So a. Um, this guy is very known in the community. Um, you should look at Braden's primer to get the math for grinding station. It's the it's the treasure storm primer on the deck list database that is not this one. He has I don't I don't I don't believe that it's his math. It could very well be. I'm trying to give credit where credit is due. It is definitely not my math. It is super useful to think about when you're playing the game. We'll link it in the description also. And then also the boys on the Corvold Discord would be you know, angry at me if I didn't mention if you're, you know, you could, if you're really looking for reanimation targets, they do exist out there. You can play things like Grim Hireling, you can play Villas, you can play Razaketh. I personally don't find them to be incredibly necessary, but like, let's say you're playing in a, in a meta where you know you're going to run into like win conless stacks every game. Maybe right. two win conless stacks. Villas might be worth considering. Not a bad one. 
Yeah, eight eight that blocks. It eats creatures like you know well, and, hireling. Same deal. And well, especially if you pair the hireling with like face breaker. Yeah. Now you're so getting you, a a bunch of incremental treasures, and you can just yeah, like, all at dudes. You can you can definitely mid range this deck up a little bit. It's not you know mid range without blue is not my favorite thing in the world, but you can make it happen. I mean, we really call want. it jundin them out for a reason. Yeah, exactly. And then yeah. anything else that I'm missing? Oh, play Tinderwall. Don't listen to Sean. Tinderwall is great. Yeah, play Tinderwall. I want Tinderwall now. Oh, okay, sick. Never mind. Listen to Sean. Yeah, no, no, it was. <laughs> it was. It was in the beginning. I did not see Tinderwall, but I've grown. I've grown to like Tinderwall. Okay, but um, I don't think we're missing anything. Uh, like if we're gonna get like in the really nitty gritty stuff, the more you yeah. play the deck, the more you see the lines. I right. That's what I about most decks and. I, it's it's fun. It's it definitely It's a fun lot thing. of fun. I, I kind of look at these videos as kind of more like a sales pitch and kind of more of a like give somebody like the basic reasons why to play it and then they can kind of we'll link them yeah. the resources that they can get to go further. Uh yeah. I do try to pick again, just I try to pick decks that will have a reasonable bottom and will kind of scale as your skill increases, as right. well as decks that you can play somewhat on a budget if you're in a non-proxy meta though i do recommend you budgeting these decks or playing them budgetless at least at least especially in the beginning because it helps you like learn how to play the decks better yes but it, you can do that so well okay with that guys i think we should probably get skedaddling um again if you want to support us you can go check out our patreon links in the description below uh please if you have any questions or comments leave them in in the comments below the video as well. Uh, I will leave a link to the website, to the deck list, to all the resources mentioned in the description also. And everybody, have a good night. Good night. Good, good night. night. Thanks, thanks for having me. Mm -hmm.